in a minute, dog. Hi, guys. Well, it is right on the borderline for being a spectacularly gorgeous spring day in the collapse of everything to a just another hot, sticky midsummer day in mid-April. Right on that borderline, uh, this will probably be the last, quote, spring day in Florida, baby. Here on Sunday, April 14th, 2024, I think is when we can officially kiss springtime goodbye. And uh, so anyway, I'm just whiling away my last few days down here at Doomsday Trailer and uh, made the mistake of going over there to the mainstream media and uh, of course now I guess we have Iran Iran uh, joining the little kerfuffle over there but uh, and all those stories about that growing kerfuffle buried away we have this story from the mainstream media Straight ahead, Doomer porn. <clears throat> Scientists create new warning system after unimaginable coral mortality event. Quote, we are entering a new world. Yes, we are. So I think, didn't they, did they officially make a new hurricane rating, uh, heading into this year's 2024 hurricane season. I'm pretty sure it's official that we have a Category 6 uh, hurricane rating awaiting the new round of Category 6 storms till they have to come up with a Category 7. And uh, in the middle of all that, we now have a new coral collapse of the coral reefs alert level on the planet and uh, so what's this all about as we enter a new world <clears throat> for years the United States National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has categorized coral reefs at five levels of concern from no stress, no stress at all, to the most threatened, which is now uh, termed, well, it was termed, I guess, alert level two, but disturbing reports of record-setting temperatures recently prompted NOAA to add not one, not two, but three, three, new higher warning levels to their system. So what is happening with the coral reefs? NOAA's Coral Reef Watch assigns a warning level based on, quote, degree heating weeks. Degree heating weeks. The degree heating weeks signify how many weeks a reef has been subjected to temperatures above the normal maximum. And while the prior rankings gave the highest threat rating to eight, to eight degree heating weeks or above, new data from the Northern Hemisphere showed several places now surpassing 20, 20 degree heating weeks from 8 to 20. The high degree heating weeks led to excessive amounts of coral bleaching which is often fatal for reefs and the life they support. This is Coral Reef Watch Director Dr. Derek Monzello quote we are entering a new world in terms of heat stress where the impacts are becoming so pervasive that we had to rethink how we are doing things. 
When you exceed a degree heating week value of 20, it is analogous to a Category 5 cyclone, soon to be a Category 6 cyclone, with unbelievably severe, drastic damage. It is the worst case scenario, close quote. So we are officially uh, have a an alert warning for the worst case scenario for the collapse of coral reefs all over the planet. <clears throat> Welcome to the new world. <clears throat> Richard Leck of World Wildlife Fund in Australia agreed, uh, quote, what this new system shows is that ocean temperatures and the risks to coral reefs are literally, literally off the charts. Global heating is impacting our oceans in the here and now in ways unimaginable only a decade ago. <coughs> Close quote. So why is coral bleaching so concerning? Essentially, coral bleaching causes corals to starve, which is bad news for all the 25% of all marine life, not to mention those 500 million humans who depend on corals for their survival. Yes, but Perhaps even more concerning is the fact that human-induced global heating is making the issue worse, with temperatures rising and weather patterns changing because of pollution. The world's oceans are growing far too hot, far too quickly according to Professor Tracy Ainsworth of the International Coral Reef Society, severe <clears throat> heat events were rare even just a decade ago. Quote, but now we don't just talk about bleaching events, about bleaching events, but mortality events, and that is what this change represents, close quote. So what is being done? What is being done? More importantly, what can you do? What can you do to stop this? Because the primary cause of coral bleaching is global heating, it is crucial to take steps to reduce your daily pollution. So this is how you, 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 okay? This is how you can save the coral reefs from collapse. It's right here in the mainstream media. I want you to pay attention to every goddamn word of this because it is your fault that the, that the coral is collapsing. It is your fault. So it is your responsibility to clean up your act and save the world's coral reefs as we go uh, to a new warning. Okay. From opting, from opting for public transit instead of driving to minimize, to minimizing your food waste, okay, so instead of driving your gas-sucking car, take a gas-sucking bus. That'll get you within, if you're lucky, five miles of where you need to go. Uh, not to mention uh, not being able to carry all of that shit you just bought at the store in the mall. All right, so if you want to stop the collapse of coral reefs, first thing you need to do is stop driving and take the bus. There you go. All right, you need to minimize your food waste. You, you know, I know you are, well, at least if you are my age, 
you were raised to clean your plate. Uh, you can't leave food on your plate when there's kids starving in Africa. So if you leave food on your plate, okay, the coral reefs will collapse. If you eat every bite of food on your plate, first you have to get your food home on the bus. Uh, I've tried that before. Uh, let, let, let me tell you. Uh, in, in, anyway, so uh, eat every bite of food on your plate that you brought home on the bus. Okay. Do not use toxic chemical pesticides and herbicides in your garden as they often end up in the ocean. So, uh, I... You know, I'm quite sure that a garden, that, that, you know, regular level, homeowner garden level of pesticides and herbicides are not good for coral reefs. I would like to know what percentage of the global coral reef mortality event is due to, uh, you know, just regular folks. Uh, like you, you guilty, you guilty planet eater, you know, you put that shit out to kill those invasive lantern flies. You're trying to kill an invasive lantern fly uh, on your apple tree in upstate New York, and you are going to kill a coral reef in Australia. So stop doing it. Okay. Uh, so from opting to public, these are, there are a number, a number of concrete actions that you can take. And do not forget, probably the most important, the most important when it comes to protecting the ocean in general, and coral reefs in particular, it is important to choose an ocean-friendly sunscreen. You know, so uh, so after so let's get so you know uh, you've been waiting all your life to go check out the uh, the. Uh, Great Barrier Reef. So finally, you save up the money. You put your six kids through college and all of that. So the kids are off on their own having more and more, you know, grandchildren. So you finally uh, get to take, you know, that bucket list, the Great Barrier Reef. So what you do is... <clears throat> You, uh, you, you get on a, a giant uh, jet, you know, as Andy the gardener would call an easy jet. So you get on a jet in New York and you burn about, I don't know, 500 tons of uh, carbon to fly from New York to Sydney. Then you've got to get from Sydney you are probably going to rent a car, probably an air-conditioned SUV, drive that from Sydney to wherever you're driving to, up to Queensland, I guess. Uh, book yourself into your Eco Lodge, your Eco Lodge, crank up the air conditioning in your Eco Lodge with your SUV parked out front, then you, you get in, you, you know, you get your tickets, and you get in a gas-sucking boat to take you from your air-conditioned eco-lodge out to the, uh, out to the car reef. So you have, let's see, a jet from New York City to Sydney, an SUV rent-a-car from Sydney to Queensland, 
a couple of nights in a uh, in an air conditioned eco lodge uh, built on former rainforest uh, and a boat ride, and then of course you get to do it all back again. So you can spend three hours uh, diving in what's left of the Great Barrier Reef, but do not worry, you can save the Barrier Reef by using about, what, two ounces of coral-friendly, uh, instead of using your old-fashioned suntan lotion, you can squeeze on, uh, I don't know, two or three ounces of ocean friendly, of ocean friendly suntan lotion, which is probably 12 times the price of regular suntan lotion. And you too can save the coral reef and pat yourself on the back that you too are saving the planet with your save the ocean sunscreen. And, 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 and guys, you know, the, the, the sickest, most twisted irony of this whole thing, there really are people who believe this. There, 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 there truly are people this fucking clueless, all right, who honestly, that they read this unadulterated horse shit uh, in, in, in the goddamn uh, mainstream media, uh, giving them a pass. Uh, they honestly believe that they are doing a fucking thing to save the coral reefs by smearing ocean-friendly, uh, ocean-friendly suntan lotion on them. And, uh, you better believe, you know, they always link you. Let's just go over you know, they always, if you want to see more actions to save coral reefs and the rest of the planet, your connection is not private. Attackers might be trying to steal your information. Okay. Uh, I think we will pass on those actions, but you can, uh, you can be sure that, uh, keeping your pecker in your pants and not letting your knickers down will be nowhere, nowhere on actions you can take to save the fucking coral reefs, the Amazon rainforest, the Arctic, the Antarctic, uh, the life of your unborn child, uh, years of financial ruin, uh, for yourself. Oh, Jesus. You know, why does the mainstream media do this crap? Is there one fucking human being on this planet believing for a fucking millisecond, uh, that smearing ocean-friendly uh, suntan lotion on their privileged, sunburnt, honky white asses, lily white asses, uh, it, it, it is going to do a damn thing to save the coral reefs after they just flew halfway across the planet in a fucking jumbo jet to uh, see the one percent. Uh, of the Great Barrier Reef uh, that hasn't already gone to hell in a handbasket. You know, this shit goes on and on and on. But uh, you, you, you can just throw a dart and, and, and just hit this shit anywhere. Uh, coral bleaching. So, uh, how many people in in Haiti... How many people uh, in Gaza? Uh, how many people in the Ukraine? How many people in Sub-Saharan Africa? Uh, how many people in Iran are thinking about uh, ocean-saving uh, <laughs> suntan lotion to save the coral reefs? I'm, I'm quite sure... Saving the coral reefs 
is way up there on people's lists of things to do today. <clears throat> anyway, get out there and save the coral reefs while you're taking it. Let's go on Amazon.com. I'm kind of bored. We're going to go on Amazon.com. And we're going to search for ocean friendly suntan. Ocean friendly sunscreen. All right, go get down to like that. Ocean friendly sunscreen. All right. We have. Oh, $13. I'm shocked. Uh, okay, <clears throat> this is reef, this is vegan, this is called sun bomb. Is it sunburn or sun bomb? It looks like, I can't tell, you know, S-U-M, the M looks like an, an R next to an N. So the, the name of their, of their eco-friendly uh, suntan lotion, Looks like is the name of it is Sunburn. All right, it has five stars, ten thousand people, twenty six thousand uh, reviews. There you go, eighty five percent of people. All right, this is an Amazon bestseller. It is vegan, and it is. Hawaii 104 Reef Act compliant. There you go. All right. It's the formula that started it all. Yes. Uh, it's see does it say uh, but it didn't does it say anything about it saving the planet yes there you go it never mentions anywhere in their product description saving the planet all right oh here we go all it says is it is Hawaii 104 Reef Act compliant. Uh, well, there you go. And it never mentions it again. Oh, fuck. We're, so, we're, we're, we're just so fucked. <laughs> All right, I have to go figure out my own way to save a planet before the real heat kicks in tomorrow. Bye, guys. Did you get the lizard or not? <laughs>